Well, thank you for tuning in and for taking the time to join us today. Uh, for those of you who have ever dreamt about taking your boat to a remote destination, living aboard your boat, or doing expedition cruising, this presentation is designed specifically for you. For many of us power boaters and former sailors, taking our boats on an expedition to remote locations like Alaska, Mexico, the South Pacific, uh, up the East Coast of the United States, the Caribbean, or crossing the Atlantic over to the Mediterranean seems like just a dream. The purpose of this series is not only to help you realize those dreams, but to help you make it an achievable dream. My name is Clifford Rome, and I will be your host for the first few episodes. I want to also mention that this program would not be possible but for the group of highly dedicated, well-respected and experienced captains who will be joining us in the future for different presentations. All of these individuals are licensed captains, each has earned their stripes over hundreds of thousands of miles at sea and literally decades of real life experience. Other than having had some naval experience on larger ships, everyone involved in this program has spent literally thousands of hours on sailboats and trawlers between 49 and 70 feet. Combined, our group has had well over 200 years and 500,000 miles of at-sea experience. This also gives you some idea of how old we've all become. Our goal is really pretty simple and straightforward. Collectively, we hope to provide inspiration, motivation, to pass along the dozens of lessons learned along the way, and to give back to the boating community. Through these programs, we hope to share some of our experiences and some of the lessons learned along the way. If we can figure out how this technology uh, actually works, you should be able to ask us questions, get answers, and through your input, be able to steer future presentations based on what it is you are interested in. If nothing else, we hope to be able to take away some of the fear and mystery from adventure cruising and to help other boaters like yourselves to realize your dream. For those of you who are home ported in Marina del Rey, extended cruising usually starts with a short excursion, like heading over to Catalina Island, which for many will be their first offshore experience. Uh, I know it certainly was for me. Then you might want to head south down to San Diego, Mexico, or north to Santa Barbara, or up to San Francisco. We are going to start by focusing on heading north to Alaska as our destination and the process of getting from here to there. So we initially started this project. We were thinking of a single hour long episode on cruising in Alaska for our local yacht club. It became clear that although we had some attractive photography of those areas, uh, what good did it do sharing the dream of Alaska without connecting the dots as how to get from here to there? That meant we needed to start with our first episode describing how to navigate the approximately 1,000 mile trip up the coast of California, Oregon, and Washington. For someone like myself, who has always suffered from seasickness, heading up one of the world's most treacherous coastlines was daunting. And having made this trip now more than 10 times, I am living proof that it is totally achievable. If planned and executed correctly, this leg of the trip can be accomplished in a safe manner. So those words, safe manner, are easy to say, and they seem to just roll off our lips. It's kind of like building a house, build a boat, become an astronaut. You get my point. Well, safe manner is 95% of everything we're going to be talking about. So on that note, we decided to backtrack a bit in our second episode and spend an hour, an hour zeroing in on some of the essentials of trip planning, vessel preparedness, safety checks, pre-checks, voyage preparation, conducting safety briefings, contingency plans, medical inventory, seasickness, system schematics, diagnostics, communication, routine engine room checks, watch standards training, standing day and night orders, and establishing abandoned ship procedures. 
So at this point, you've now made it all the way up the Pacific coast. You're into the protected waters of the Pacific Northwest. And it means that the most difficult part of this journey is now behind you. The next uh, video segment will cover the 600 mile stretch through the inside waters of British Columbia and up to Southeast Alaska. Our fourth episode picks up in Juneau. And from there, we head out icy straits, past Glacier Bay, and the 350 miles across the Gulf of Alaska to Prince William Sound. We will also briefly touch on heading south along the Kenai Peninsula down to Kodiak Island and the Alaskan Peninsula. In the process of creating these first four episodes, uh, the group and I identified what we considered were 21 other important and exciting topics to cover in this series. Given today's technology and using the interactive platform, uh, the list can grow, shrink, change course over time, and in such a way, hopefully, we can develop webinars to meet your needs and desires. Our thinking as of now is that each webinar will last approximately 60 minutes, starting with a brief five-minute overview of the scheduled topic, an introduction of the moderator, along with any guest speakers, followed by a 40-minute presentation of the topic and concluding with 15 minutes for questions and answers. At the conclusion of each presentation, the session will be cataloged and indexed to provide a reference library so that this information can be easily accessed and retrieved in the future. For those who are interested, we are going to try and make available any of the schematics, spreadsheets, flowcharts, graphs, checklists, which were presented during each webinar for download. These PDFs hopefully will serve as a useful guide, reference material, or a modifiable template for you to use. I wanna mention that all speeds and distances will be given in nautical miles, temperatures will be in Fahrenheit, and depths will be in feet. Finally, I wanna say that the driving force behind our creating an achievable dream and the one central theme we all seem to share is our unwavering passion for boating. It may feel like a hobby, but for those of us that end up embracing expedition cruising, it is a highly skilled profession. In the end, I believe it is our passion that keeps us connected to the process, enables us to face new challenges, it sustains the thousands of hours required to learn new skills and the endurance to overcome obstacles along the way. It is the commitment to this passion that dares us to dream the dream, to face new challenges, to not give up, to strive for excellence, and in the end, hopefully, to realize our dream. With that in mind, let me share some of the topics which we hope to be covering and sharing with you. After having finished our first four episodes of the Alaska Adventure, we realized those two little words, safe manner, raised more questions than we had time to fully explore or answer in episode two. In fact, we felt that we needed about 10 episodes to fully explore this topic. So here are the highlights of our second series entitled, In a Safe Manner. So let's first consider what constitutes the attributes of a well-found vessel for offshore, long-range, expedition-style cruising. We look at considerations of its livability, capability, what is its range, does it have good endurance, is it efficient, how serviceable or its serviceability, functionality and safety. Next, we wanna discuss the kind of natural evolution from sail to power, or from a small coastal cruising power boat to perhaps a larger, longer range uh, boat, more capable in an expedition style trawler which has been designed for living aboard for extended periods of time. I can tell you speaking personally that after having sailed 60,000 miles on our 49 foot catch, I transitioned from sail to power about 28 years ago, thinking I knew a lot more than I actually did. Fortunately, I had the help of a lot of good people who were both giving and generous enough to help guide me through the process. Our third episode tries to address some of the more obscure and less obvious concerns uh, which impact this unique lifestyle. Uh, we have entitled this episode, The Price of Freedom. 
and its purpose is to address a few of the more practical, psychological, and financial considerations of living the lifestyle and taking this road less traveled. We will touch on compatibility, mental preparedness, relationships, stresses, communication, and the often overlooked financial considerations, such as the direct opportunity cost and indirect cost of living this lifestyle. Our fourth episode uh, is for those who are more interested in the notion of designing, building, or buying a new or used expedition boat. We can easily fill several hours devoted to discussing the, the pros and cons of each of these alternatives and a discussion on the unique characteristics of the different styles of boat, like recreational versus commercial, single versus twin engine, forward versus aft pilot house, etc. What are the advantage and disadvantages? How much time should you expect this process to take? We want to look at the functionality, support, building materials like steel versus aluminum versus fiberglass, boat length, tonnage, stability, etc. Our fifth talk will be devoted to voyage planning, weather routing, running maintenance, in other words, performing some maintenance while actually underway cruising, technical ability, and safety considerations. In our sixth episode, we focus on winter maintenance, in other words, maintenance when you are not cruising um, and in during periods of downtime. From our experience, we can tell you that for every day of cruising, you will need at least one day of downtime. We will touch on planning, prioritizing, practices, procedures, preparedness, systems testing, spares, medical inventory, and budgeting. Next, in episode seven, we want to have one discussion devoted to bridge design and setting up a functional pilot house. We will cover the layout and discuss specific electronics such as radars, sonar, autopilot, automatic identification system, also known as AIS, communication, backup systems, standalone versus integrated bridge design, commercial versus recreational equipment, documentation, and bridge management. In our eighth episode, we will take a closer look at the mechanical systems, including single versus dual engines, engine room layout, generators, stabilizers, inverters, hydraulics, water maker, heating systems, air conditioning, spare parts, backup considerations, access to equipment, schematics, diagnostics, tools, your workbench, and the ability to perform maintenance and repairs on the boat. In episode nine, this is more of a pickup episode to focus on other important issues such as a vessel monitoring system, safety, security, closed circuit TV, fire, flood, deck equipment, including such items as cranes, anchors, winches, tenders. Talk a little bit about thrusters and for those interested in traveling abroad, the need for full voltage frequency controllers and a Mediterranean style boarding ramp. In episode 10, our final episode in this series, although it may seem somewhat intuitive, it is devoted to a discussion of pets, getting ashore, lay days, downtime, guests, crew, such things as dietary restrictions of your guests, safety briefings, policies, procedures, and integrating this with overall voyage planning. Now we get to get back to the cruising section of our webinar. And so in this third section of the series, uh, we're going to be moving from the Pacific to the Atlantic, including the Caribbean, the East Coast of the United States, Nova Scotia, up to Newfoundland, the St. Lawrence Seaway, and the Great Lakes. So our first episode one of this section three, will pick back up where we left off in Southern California. Um, I think on this episode, the goal is to focus on cruising south from San Diego along the coast of Baja, California, down to Cabo San Lucas, then over to La Paz. Uh, from there, we'll cross the Sea of Cortez down to Mazatlan. From there to Puerto Vallarta, Manzanillo, Zihuataneo, to Acapulco, and the Gulf of Tehuantepec. We'll want to discuss weather considerations, customs, immigrations, 
the spare parts you'll want to carry for this leg of the journey, medical supplies, special standing orders, safety considerations, provisioning, abandoned ship, communication, dock water filtration, insurance, and the preferred seasons for cruising in these waters. Our next episode will pick up again in Acapulco for a quick overview of working our way down along the coast of Mexico, the Gulf of Tehuantepec, and then continuing to Guatemala, El Salvador, Costa Rica, and transiting the Panama Canal. Uh, in this episode, we'll also want to discuss the pros and cons of shipping your boat as deck cargo or on a float on, float off, semi submersible ship such as Dockwise. Uh, in episode three, uh, we're going to go through the Panama Canal and from the cold waters of the Pacific into the warmer waters of the Atlantic. Most of this episode will be devoted to an overview of the Caribbean islands, preferred routing to the Caribbean, either straight from Panama or heading south from Florida, weather and sea considerations for both passages, special systems you might want like zero speed stabilizers, provisioning, safety, some more talk on weather, and a little about St. Thomas, the British Virgin Islands, Antigua, St. Martin, St. Bart's, and St. Lucia. In episode four, we pick up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is the mecca of the boating world. Here at one time or another, you're gonna see virtually every other yacht cruising on the east coast of the United States, the Caribbean, or in the Mediterranean. This episode will cover the southeast portion of the United States uh, in Fort Lauderdale up to Virginia as we head to the Mid-Atlantic. For boats drawing less than five feet, we will provide an overview of heading up the Intercoastal Waterway, also known as the ICW. This can be a fascinating adventure and really we could devote several episodes to just cruising the ICW. But instead, we're going to focus mostly on taking the offshore route with stops in Palm Beach, Cape Canaveral, Savannah, Charleston, North Carolina, rounding Cape Hatteras, and finally Norfolk, Virginia. We will discuss the pros and cons of taking the near coastal versus offshore route, the Gulf Stream, and what to expect on the passage north. We continue traveling north in episode five, up through the mid-Atlantic states from Virginia, through the Chesapeake, and taking a quick side trip up the Potomac River to Washington, D.C. We will do a quick stopover in Annapolis and Baltimore before heading through the C&D Canal, which stands for the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal, down the Delaware Bay to New Jersey, up along the Jersey Shore, then under the Verrazano Bridge uh, and up the Hudson River into New York City. Episode seven starts in New York City and we take a spectacular trip up the East River where the currents can run upwards of seven knots past LaGuardia Airport, the prison on Rikers Island, up through Hell's Gate, and into Long Island Sound. We will then zigzag back and forth between the Connecticut shore and the Long Island shore, then up to Newport, Rhode Island, uh, over to Martha's Vineyard, out to Nantucket, before continuing back uh, through the Cape Cod Canal, past Plymouth, and to Boston, Massachusetts, then continuing on to Portland and ending this series uh, in Maine. For those who are interested in venturing a little further afield, episode eight will probably be to your liking. Uh, we will cross over the Bay of Funday to Nova Scotia, round Cape Sable, visit Lunenburg, Halifax, go up to Cape Breton Island before continuing north over to Newfoundland. From Newfoundland, we cut southwest through the Cabot Straits down to the jewel of this area, Prince Edward Island, and then up the St. Lawrence Seaway to Quebec City, Montreal, through a series of locks which raise the boat 500 feet above sea level. And from there we cruise up to New York through the Thousand Island region and into Lake Ontario and over to Toronto. So our fourth and final section is a four-part series devoted to cruising in Europe. Episode one uh, of part four is going to start with preparation for a trip to Europe, 
a discussion of crossing the Atlantic uh, and focusing on voyage planning, weather considerations, spare parts to bring to Europe because of the metric system, uh, routing options, uh, and discussion on whether you should consider shipping your boat on a float on float off vessel like Dockwise or as deck cargo described earlier. Uh, episode two of this series is going to be devoted to cruising in the Western Mediterranean. So we're going to take a look at cruising in Spain, in the Balearic Islands, uh, Mallorca, Palma, and Ibiza, the French Riviera. Italy, including the islands of Corsica, Sardinia, and Sicily, then through the Straits of Messina, and finishing up in Valletta on the Isle of Malta. We will discuss the new, unique weather considerations uh, of cruising in this part of the world, special considerations to remain mindful of, like the need for additional crew, power considerations, spare parts, etc., cetera, uh, coordinating guests, whether to winter over and where to winter over, and the unique and convoluted method of docking in the Mediterranean known as the Medmore. Our third episode will continue from Malta to the Eastern Mediterranean, starting in the area of Venice, Italy, and then continuing south through Croatia, Montenegro, Greece, then transiting through the Corinth Canal and over to Turkey and Israel. Our fourth uh, and final episode in this European series will be cruising north from the Mediterranean up along the Portuguese coast into the English Channel, up the Thames River to London, then continuing on uh, into the North Sea and up to Norway. I have been on the water since I was about eight or nine years old, uh, the first 10 years of which really were not by choice. Um, I didn't really find my personal love of boating until I was 18 years old. I am grateful to have been truly blessed to have had the gift of a wonderful father, a naval officer who served in the Navy during World War II, my family, and friends who were so generous with their knowledge, their time, and patience throughout my lifetime. I could never have achieved this dream without all of them, and it underscores my appreciation for the adage that it truly takes a village. Uh, over the course of this series, you will have an opportunity to meet many of these highly accomplished, talented, and interesting individuals. And we look forward to seeing you again on our next webinar. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.